Okay, so welcome. This is a video about the wave cycle synthesis capabilities of the electron model samples. And basically what that means is how can we turn the model samples, which is meant to be a um, sample-based drum machine or drum computer, how can we turn that into something that's more like a synth? And um, this is going to be especially useful if we're trying to create um, tones or sounds that we maybe would use more melodically um, also for kind of ambient drone type sounds, great for that. Um, and of course you can still use this technique to make percussive sounds as well, if you like. So basically what, uh, what we're doing here can be done on any device that can play back samples um, that also has a loop mode, like the model samples does. And the loop mode has to be kind of perfect where there's no gap in between each loop. Uh, so you have to be able to play one uh, audio file and then immediately play the other one without any sort of silence or gap in between them. So any device that is capable of that can do that, uh, can do what we're doing here. Um, so for example, the Volca sample can also do this. Um, and I believe the new, uh, the new circuit rhythm can also do this. Um, of course, all the fancier electron boxes. Uh, so there's, there's plenty of options out there. I particularly like the model samples for this, um, one, because it's relatively affordable, and two, because um, we have six different tracks here. And so when we're doing wave cycle synthesis, it's kind of like we're creating a monophonic synth voice. And since I have six tracks, I can do that six times. So basically I can make uh, six independent mono synths um, out of this one box here. And then I can layer all those sounds together to make like a crazy unison mode kind of thing, which is pretty fun. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of get into all this stuff. So what I've, the starting point we're at right now, um, I've got just a default, uh, like a knit patch on here. So there's no sequence, everything's blank. I've loaded in one of the, the factory drum kits um, just to give us something to get started with. Okay. Um, I also am using uh, a MIDI controller keyboard. So this is not making any, any sound, it's just sending MIDI information uh, to the model samples. And I'm doing this just because I think for a lot of what we're doing, having a traditional piano style keyboard is just gonna make more sense. Um, but to be clear, this is totally optional. Everything I'm doing on here, you totally can do with just the model samples itself. And uh, what these keys here are doing is the same as what these keys down here do, right? So you can totally play it just with these little keys across the bottom without having a separate keyboard. So just pointing that out. I'm also running everything off battery power just because I can. Um, one of my favorite things, things about the model samples is how compact and portable it is, how easy it is to run off a battery. Um, this little battery here will run the model samples for like, I don't know, a week or something. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy good runtime. So this is a really uh, nice little setup for portability, um, you know, playing at the park or in a, wherever at the beach or whatever. Like I definitely take this thing around with me. And um, I think the wave cycle synthesis really extends the usefulness of the model samples by itself. Because again, it's really you know, designed around being a drum machine or a drum computer, and it's great for that. Um, but the fact that you can also make synth voices with the model samples to then layer on top of yours, it makes it more of a complete uh, groove box kind of thing, and, you know, a bit more like the Novation circuit where you have separate drum sections and synth uh, sections. And um, so in terms of it being like a songwriting scratch pad, which, which I would say is kind of the, the main way that I like to use this, um, this really allows you to do that. Now, of course, you can play a sample of a synth, right? I, can, I could just sample a synth, have that file loaded in there and play that as my kind of stand in for maybe a better synth I would uh, replace later. But I think you'll see with wave cycle synthesis, you can get a lot of depth, a lot of sound design and sound sculpting capabilities, um, same type of thing you would expect from a more dedicated synth. So it's really impressive the amount of uh, stuff you can do with this, I think. So let's get into it. So to start with, um, I'm gonna start with, uh, this is like a woodblock kind of sound. Um, again, it's one of the default sounds it comes with. So the idea with wave cycle synthesis is that we're taking um, any sample, any audio file, any wave file, and uh, we're going to take a small little chunk of it, a little snippet, and then we're gonna loop that or repeat it over and over and over. So it's like, it's like if you, you know, cut down a wave file and then just copy pasted it over and over and over in a DAW, you would get something. So um, this little sticker I have up here is a good representation. If you take any wave file and you zoom way, way, way in, you are at the basic level going to get some sort of a waveform like this. So this happens to be a sine wave, and um, but it can, you know, it can look a lot more complex and jagged than this. It doesn't have to be just a clean sine wave. Um, kind of the cleaner the wave tone 
uh, sorry, the cleaner the waveform is like this, the more of a clean tone you're going to get. So if you're going for kind of a more pretty like piano-y or glassy kind of sound, then you probably want something like a sine wave. Um, but if you have something that's kind of more harsh and jagged, you're going to get a harsher tone. So if you wanted something more like the, you know, the saw wave on an, ass, on an analog synth type of sound, you know, you might go for something that's a bit more complex. But what's cool about this is that we don't have to use just, you know, your kind of traditional sine, triangle, square, whatever waves. Like we can use literally anything we want, any audio file whatsoever. So you can, your starting point can be an incredibly complex waveform. For now, we're going to start with something simple. Again, this um, wood lock sound, pretty, pretty basic town. All right, so to get started, all you have to do on the model samples, turn on loop mode like that. All right. Oh, I do want to mention here, um, a lot of uh, the sounds, the kind of soundscape possibilities that we'll get into with wave cycle, cycle synthesis, it's really easy to get um, very kind of loud and piercing tones. So if you're in headphones right now or big speakers or whatever, just a heads up on that. You know, I'm trying to control levels in this, but like keep, keep your volume a little bit down. I don't want to hurt your ears. So, um, so we start off, uh, we just loop this little woodblock sound. We get that. Now uh, we have our start point and uh, length. So this is sample start point for now. We'll just leave it at zero. Um, length at its default is 120, meaning it's playing the entire sample file, regardless of length. So in this case, this is a relatively short file, but even if it was like a 30 second file, that would be the, um, the full, whole thing. So as we start turning it down, we're turning down kind of proportionally how much of the file we're playing. So let's hear what happens as we start turning this down. Like I'll go down to 100. And as I keep going down, you'll hear uh, kind of the, the looping speeds up, right? I'm going to turn the volume down just a bit on this one. So you hear how it's, it's getting faster. It's also kind of raising in pitch uh, slightly. And the shorter our sample length gets, the more it turns into um, kind of like an, an oscillator. I mean, it is basically what we're doing is we're, we're oscillating this, um, uh, this waveform over and over. So here we are at a very short sample length of three. Um, and again, that's a percentage of the original length of the file. Um, and uh, we can hear this is pretty much a pure tone at this point. Right? So with this type of foundation, we can build something that's, you know, just kind of your basic, like maybe E piano type tone. So like, let's say maybe I'll turn down the filter a bit, make it a little bit darker. Uh, we can play with the decay. All right, make it ring out or have it be plucky, something short, right? Notice this is monophonic, right? So I can't play a chord. I can play as many keys as I want, but it's only gonna make a single sound. So again, we're building a monosynth here, not a polysynth, right? So, um, and then of course you can also still play with the pitch knob on here. Right? And I would think of this as like, imagine we're, um, we have a guitar, but it only has one string on it, right? And this pitch knob is like the tuning peg on that string. So when we're playing this, it's like, right? We're making it tighter, the pitch goes up, or we're making it looser and the pitch goes down. So, okay, cool. So we've got our basic thing here. And now from here, you know, this is, this is enough to start writing a rough melody, right? Maybe not the most interesting sound. Certainly there's more we could do with it. Um, but before we get into ways of sculpting the sound, I want to talk about, let's start with the actual like wave file that we're using. So in this case, we're using, you know, this, this kind of random one that I picked this uh, woodblock sound, but let's go with a wave file. That's maybe, um, even more simple. So in the, uh, the default factory folder here, Electron actually provides this whole folder called waves. And inside, 
we have different kinds of uh, different subfolders, noise uh, and OSC, which is oscillators. So let's go into the oscillator folder. And then as you go through here, right, so it's gonna say oscillators, um, we've got like square waves, saw waves, uh, you know, all, all these kind of different pulse lit, uh, all these different things. And then these ones that are meant to, you know, emulate different things, clav, uh, whatever, FM tones, right? So you can get all kinds of cool stuff in here. Let's go with something super basic. Let's go with the saw wave here. Okay, just to get back to defaults. So here's what that sounds like by itself. Well, what's going on? Why is it just this little, you know, <laughs> it's, it's such a short little sound, you kind of almost can't hear it. it just kind of pops your speakers. Well, it's because we're only playing through a single wavelength of this saw wave. So that's what it sounds like for a single length. Not very interesting. Turn on loop mode. There we go. Okay, so now we have more of a tone. Again, this is more like the, the saw wave you'd get off of some other synthesizer. Great, um, and now let's play with the length even more. So in this case, the length uh, kind of doesn't come into play as much because we're only dealing with a single cycle, right? So we can't go too much shorter, so we'll play with it, but. So you can see length basically just becomes pitch at this point. Okay. Um, so when we're dealing with single cycle waveforms uh, or single cycle oscillators, um, we kind of have a bit less control over the fundamental tone because we have such a short or small, you know, simple thing to work with to start with. But we can still still do all the other stuff, you know, decay and cut off and. Right, so easily get into like making a nice bass tone, uh, bass line kind of thing. Um, you know, we can play with start point also. Again, it's mostly changing the pitch because it's just making that already short waveform shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Right? Let's go back to default. This particular tone would probably benefit from some distortion. So let's get some of that in. Maybe turn this down a bit. What else could we do to make this interesting? Well, we have an LFO, let's play with that. So let's put our LFO, well, let's put it on cutoff, do a more classic thing. Okay, crank this up. So yeah, we can do, um, you know, we can achieve a lot of pretty classic synth uh, sounds or tones using this. So um, that's fun. Okay, so yeah, again, um, we're dealing with uh, probably just a single cycle waveform here, um, but it has, you know, more character to it, right? It's a more complex waveform. Here it's got that kind of buzziness to it, right? And so we can do. All kinds of fun things there. Um, all right, and let's leave that one there. Now I want to bring in a actual wave table. So what a wave table is, it's a bunch of these little single cycles all strung together, uh, concatenated together, meaning put one right after another. Um, so if you could think of like, it's, it's like each one of these is a letter and then when you string them together, uh, multiple letters make a word. So wavetable is kind of like that. Um, so it doesn't, I don't know if it comes with any wavetables by default, but I have added my own. So I have, um, one of my folders here, wave cycle, or sorry, one cycle, single cycle. That is all of my single cycle oscillators, uh, in one folder. And then I have another folder that I have called wave table, which gets cut off, so it's wave tab. And um, in here, uh, I have the Adventure Kid waveforms, AKWF. And that is definitely the place you wanna start. They're free, it's an extensive library of uh, wave tables, and they're wonderful. So I've got a bunch of them on here. And again, they all have kind of, there's some that are just like 
and just numbered and some of these that have that are labeled with some sort of tone. So let's try this E organ one. So before I turn on loop mode, right, if we play just the wave uh, table by itself, here's what it sounds like. It sounds like absolute mess, right? Interesting for certain certain effects maybe, but probably not what you want to use all the time. Let's turn this down a bit. Okay, so now let's turn on that loop mode. Right, it's decaying out. If we put the decay on infinite, then we've made some sort of weird, wacky drone sound. Um, probably not that musically useful. But with a wave table, since we have now a much longer file to start with, um, the kind of convention around wave tables is that they they are 120 of these single cycles all um, put end to end, right, serially. So I believe, I conjecture, that's why Electron chose the number 120 for the length here, because that so perfectly meshes with wave tables. So if we crank this all the way down to one, so sample length one, start point zero, meaning the original start of the file, now we have a tone. Right, just like we did before, because now we're just looking at a single one of these waves looped endlessly to make some sort of tone. But since the wave table has all these different ones in it, there's all sorts of cool things we can do here, right? For one, let's play, let's leave the length at one, so we're only hearing one of those waveforms, and then let's play with the start point. Here we can get all these different range of tones. It does click or pop a bit kind of in between each one. Um, and so chances are like you're gonna wanna kind of pick one and then stick with it. But this is really cool because in this one little file, we have 120 different tones that we can make basically. And you could basically think of it as like having 120 different oscillators. So like a regular synth will of often have, you know, like I said, the sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, um, you know, um, I'm missing one here. Sawtooth, there you go, sawtooth. Those are the four basic ones, right? Well, so that's four oscillators you can pick from and then build your sound based on that. This is 120 per file. <laughs> so we can have literally thousands and thousands of different oscillators on this to pick from to use as the basis of our sound. And definitely um, that's going to have the biggest impact on the sound is like what is the basic oscillator you're choosing. Um, but we can also combine multiple of them, right? So it doesn't just stop there. We can say, okay, this one's sounding cool. We'll start with this. But now let's start increasing the length. So let's increase the length to two. So now instead of having just the one tone looping over and over, we're having two tones that are gonna loop. And let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, that's pretty cool, right? So we're getting this kind of beating back and forth between the two oscillators because they have different tones. Let's hear what just that second one sounds like on its own. So I'm gonna change it back to one. Change my start point, let's see, that's 18, so this one will be 19. Okay. So this is my second half of my file, right? Back to 18, first half, and then length back to two. So now we're playing 18 and 19 together. Pretty cool, right? Um, so you can get a really neat uh, like depth of sound and kind of interesting uh, sounds especially these kinds of like pulsing or uh, pulsating or like beating kind of sounds um, using this technique which is super fun uh, and of course we can go way deeper with this this is, this is barely scratching the surface so let's uh, let's make it even longer let's introduce a third one okay sample length is now three So now uh, we are playing with having four of these single cycles all uh, concatenated and looping that. And there's really no limit to this, right? Let's crank it up crazy high. Here's 30. So 30 of those individual oscillators all loop together. Start the longer it gets, the start. Uh, you know, kind of the more wild it gets, or like the less, probably the less musically useful it gets. But, um, but you know, just to point out, you can kind of play with any of this. And so like, let's say, I think the shorter numbers, like two, three, four, you know, tend to be kind of more musical, 
right? And we can play with the start point more to, to get another subsection. So it's like if we have the whole length of the file is 120, right now our start point is 18, right? So we're here and we've shortened it down to just four. And now we can scan backwards and forwards through the file. Okay, so in each case, we're taking a chunk of four out of that file. Cool, very cool. So um, let's, uh, let's leave this one here and let's go to a new track and do this again. So I'm going to go into a different wavetable. Um, let's see, let's pick, let's pick one of these numbered ones, number 13. So play the whole thing. Absolute insanity. Let's turn that down a bit. Sorry if that was loud. Okay, so here's the whole thing. Let's loop it. Uh, let's crank our length down to something short. Uh, let's do let's do four again, and I'm just going to pick a random start point towards the end of the file. Cool. Actually, let's go back down to one. Okay. So for this next kind of just demonstration section, I'm going to make all of these simpler. So they're all going to have a length of one. Ooh, that's a bit much. Let's pick a different one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, sorry if some of these are super loud. It's It really is kind of difficult to get all these to level properly because depending on what that oscillator is that you're looping, the volume can be very different <laughs> between them. So, okay, that was good. This has got this LFO on it still. Let's turn that off for now. Okay. Okay, so we've got uh, kind of some simple tones there. I'm going to quickly dial in two other simple tones on these using the same technique. So let's go into, let's do some single cycles here. Dark uh, C4. Let's go for this last one here. So I now have uh, six different tones uh, on my six different tracks here using the wave cycle synthesis technique. And uh, one reason why the key step is so fun here is that it allows you to quickly um, change your MIDI channel that you're sending out. So right now I'm on MIDI channel 10, which is uh, the auto setting here. So if you go into the MIDI here um, and over to the in channels and then auto in, uh, there it is. Yeah, auto in. By default, it's channel 10. What that means is that whatever, and I'm, I'm outputting channel 10 on the key step here. So it, what that means is that whatever track I have selected, one through six, that's the one I'm controlling. Okay. All right, I don't have to change anything on the key step at all. I only make the change on the model samples. So that's cool. Um, but let's change it so that I'm, uh, I'm actually outputting on their default MIDI channels. So by default, in terms of MIDI input, the um, these are just the MIDI channel matches the track number. So channel one for track one, channel two for track two, up to six. Pretty easy. So on the key step, I just hold shift, and there's numbers here corresponding to my MIDI channels. So now I'm outputting MIDI channel one from the key step, and I'm controlling channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, and six. Right, so notice I'm not touching that at all. Okay, um, so what's cool about this is that I can be using the key step to control one track while the other ones are maybe being sequenced or, um, you know, or maybe I'm like, I can do this kind of thing with my, maybe my left hand is controlling track one and my right hand is controlling track six. Right, 
So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And notice there, when I hit both at once, we start getting, you know, multi-timbrality or um, intervals, chords, these kinds of things. You start stacking different uh, frequencies on top of each other, and then that can result in harmonics and other interesting stuff happening. So, um, <laughs> you're probably hearing all these kids playing in the background, sorry about that. But Here's the other really fun thing about this. This takes a little bit of configuration, but let's say um, instead of having six independent mono synth voices, I wanted to have one fat unison voice, right? Meaning all six of these voices are all playing the same note uh, at the same time. Well, we can do that. Uh, so let's go into our MIDI settings here, input channels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set each one of these to listen or have the MIDI input channel be channel one. So track one's already that by default, so I don't have to change it. Track two is gonna be one, three is gonna be one. And I think you get the pattern. So setting all of these to listen on MIDI channel one. And now <clears throat> when I output MIDI channel one from the key step, all six of them fire simultaneously for every note press. So this is pretty wild. Um, this is, uh, yeah, basically we've built a, a unison mode synth now, but each one of these six tracks can be a different oscillator with different settings, and each one has its own independent LFO, which can be doing crazy stuff, um, as well as, you know, different effects sends, to del delay and reverb. I mean, there's, there's just a lot you can do here, right? Different decay amounts. Decay amounts. Um, one of the major things we're kind of missing here is the attack. Uh, so like, we don't really have a traditional ADSR envelope uh, so we really we just have the decay side of it. Um, the kind of one workaround is the in the LFO menu here. One of the waveforms you can choose is ENV or envelope, and you can actually use this uh, kind of like a um, kind of like an attack envelope if you want to. Frankly, I kind of never do, but you you can. Um, so let's leave that off. But yeah, again, what I think is cool about this is. Um, stacking up all these sounds uh, to make just a very complex sound, right? Just focused on this track one sound here. Um, so we already talked about how we can use the LFO to make it a bit more complex. Of course, we can play with the K, we can play with um, reverb and delay. Um, the filter, of course, is gonna shape the sound. So that's all well and good. Um, I think one of the other really cool things um, that when this is a little bit kind of deeper menu divey type stuff is, uh, let's see, if you go into pad config, which is shift in the back arrow. What that's doing is changing the settings for this particular drum pad. So in this case, we can't use a MIDI controller. It's only changing what this pad itself does. Um, so you can set the velocity if you want it to be velocity sensitive or have fixed velocity. Um, but I think what's more interesting, so let's leave the velocity depth at max 127. So it means it, this has the full range of zero to 127 different possible velocity values when I hit it, right? But what we can do is change um, the destination and the destination depth. So it's kind of like um, a mod matrix, what we're doing here, is we're saying whatever my velocity value is when I tap this pad, I want you to use that value to modulate something else that I choose. So um, let's, probably the simplest thing to hear is gonna be modulating pitch. And let's set a depth of, I don't know, 12 something. Okay, it's being a little quiet on me here. Um, let's, uh, it's, it's quiet because these pads are not very sensitive. You have to hit them very hard to get a good velocity response. So the fix for that is change the velocity depth down. Turn it down, I like something in the 50 to 70 range. And basically what you're doing is we're taking, instead of that full 128 different possible velocity values, we're shrinking that down by half roughly. Um, which uh, means that you're just gonna get kind of a um, easier response out of it takes a lot less force to get a louder sound is what's happening. So what's happening here is as I hit the pad at different velocities, meaning I'm hitting it harder and softer, it's changing the pitch that comes out. Okay, 
So that's kind of interesting. Um, but what if we instead map that to something else? Instead of pitch, what if we matched it, mapped it to sample length, right? Remember, sample length determines kind of how complex our waveform is if we're dealing with a wave table. So. Oh, it's already at maximum length, so that's why we can't we can't go any longer in the length. Uh, so let's crank it down. Okay, I think I have this one as just a. Uh, this is a single cycle. That's why. Sorry, this isn't going to work at the single cycle. Let us do this instead. We'll just leave this. Let's just do this with one of the wave tables. That single cycle. Okay. This is one of the wavetables. So again, we're on, if we go to maximum length, sounds like that. So crank the length down to something small like five. Okay. And now if I set my uh, velocity depth down, oh, let's say 65, and then my destination to length and the depth, uh, you can go negative with this too, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the length get shorter um, the harder I press is basically what's happening. Right, so if I do a light tap, I get my longer, more complex waveform. If I do a hard tap, I get a short tone and somewhere in between those, right? So So you can get a lot of kind of interesting stuff going on there. And of course, all of this can be sequenced, right? I can be sequencing in um, uh, my different steps so that each one has a different velocity value, right? So you don't have to just play it live on the pad. You can just sequence every step with velocity that way. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, now, of course, you could also parameter lock each one to have a different length, and that would effectively be doing the same thing, right? So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna set all six tracks to play the same sample. Okay, in this case, that sample is going to be one of those wavetables. And uh, now we should be able to set all the tracks to have a length of one. There we go. Cool, we're finally there. So uh, yeah, a bit fiddly to get it going for sure, but um, Basically what we've now built is a unison mode synth. In this case, it's very much like a bass synth, right? Sounds pretty good just by itself. Now, uh, kind of the really interesting part of this, like we can start modifying each one of these six different voices uh, very slightly to you know, have, have them vary um, slightly between each other. And we can do that in a bunch of different ways. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, let's go for like a detune effect, um, right? Where the, the pitches uh, deviate a little bit. And that's gonna give us that kind of thick uh, sound that we'd get from a, any bass synth with a detune. Okay, so on this first one, let's have, I'm gonna say my max pitch will just be one, 1.0. Okay, so track six is gonna be one pitch pitched one up, track one will be pitched one down, and then um, these ones in between, they will be pitched some other kind of percentage. So this one is gonna be, let's do 0 0.7 there, and then up 0 0.7 here. Okay, and then let's do down point, oh, I don't know, down 0.4 and up 0.4. Let's see what that sounds like. Whoa. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting, but it's interesting. Let's go down the octave. Uh, one thing I want to note on this, the total range of pitch shifting samples up and down is two octaves in either direction. So you have a four octave range, you know, two octaves up, two octaves down. Now, MIDI controllers like the key step here, they can do a much wider range than that. So you, if you start playing with your octave shift up and down on your keyboard, you're gonna get to a range where it's below what the model samples can play and above what the model samples can play. So just understand that's normal uh, in this case. So I'm shifting down one octave here on my keyboard. Get 
some wild sounds. I'm always tempted to play chords. I, you forget again. You can't actually play chords with this, right? It's this is a unison mode mono synth that we built. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see how we can extend this a bit. Well, let's add some reverb to just every track, because reverb's always great. I also want to crank up that delay a bit, or decay. Sorry, decay. Maybe some delay as well. So remember, when you hold track, it affects all six at once. Very convenient for this kind of thing. The delay feedback on this is super good. Yeah, so I think that's a pretty compelling and interesting sound there. And again, we can, you know, we can mess with it on the fly. This is a wave table. So we've now set this kind of basic like weird detune thing with some effects, but we're still just playing one, a single one of the 120 different possible um, single cycle waveforms that's inside this file. So if I start playing, if I hold track and I start playing with the start point, every single one of these, I should be moving them together. Right, so we should be getting a consistent tone out of them. So let's just pick some random number, 26. That's pretty dope. Uh, let's pick another one, 37. So some cool bass stuff happening here. Um, let's go to a higher octave. So notice when I get outside of the range, of what the model samples can pitch up and down. It just plays the, the raw tone regardless of whatever note I hit, so. Right, so there's my range. Okay, let's try a new one, 55. Yeah. 65. Try this one is with a short decay. Oh, again, remember I want to hit. Let's see. I want to get all of them to be the same, so I messed that one up. So let's one four. Close enough. Okay. Let's try the decay down on all these. Get something plucky. <laughs> Interesting. Let's try a new one. Pretty similar. Okay, uh, let's go back to that long decay. And also remember, set the decay to infinite, and now we have a drone note. Okay, so let's get back into something kind of sane here. I'm gonna turn these effects down. Okay, so um, we have our detune thing going here, but uh, let's say now we want to do something different. So instead of just having kind of detuned oscillators, let's build an actual chord mode into this, right? Again, each track can only play one note at a time. They're all monophonic, um, but by using all these notes together, uh, we can make up to six note chords. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go back to track one. Um, I'm gonna set my pitch to be default on all of these. Okay, so I'm setting my pitch back to zero. 
Okay, so now they should all ring out together. Cool. And let's maybe pick a different sound to work with here. That's kind of cool. Okay, so let's go with that. So now all six are playing the same tone simultaneously. So it makes it thicker, but you know, beyond that, it's, it's just one note, right? Um, now, in order to build chords, we could set the pitch on each one to be you know, an interval apart and do it that way. Um, totally works, right? That would be akin to having a six string guitar and tuning each of the, uh, you know, the tuning pegs so that each string is playing a different note and they're just strumming all six strings together. Okay, so I think what I'm thinking about here is um, the way that I would kind of normally make chords with this is using the sequencer. Um, so I guess in, sense of, in the sense of making a live play chord mode where I press a single key here and it plays a chord, the only way I think to do that is to actually use the pitch knob on every track. Um, so let's go ahead and do that just, just to demonstrate. It's not too bad. So track one here, this time we'll pitch it way down. Um, We'll do negative 12 on this one, so that's like an octave down, right? This one, let's do negative seven, which is a fifth down. Oops. This one also, let's try negative four. This one will be positive four. Positive seven, positive 12. Yeah, so that's what we want. So this is now basically a chord mode, right? So single key press plays a chord. In this case, it's a six note chord. Now, of course, you don't have to use all six tracks for this, right? I could use, say, these three or even just two or whatever to play a chord, and then the other ones could be doing something different. Totally fine. Now, also, you know, a bit tedious because I'm having to choose every single note in the chord. I can't just play it the way you would on a polysynth, so definitely harder in that sense. Um, but it works. So let's, um, you can also do the same thing with the sequencer. Now, once you have a, um, a note sequenced in here, uh, you get controls over it. If you press and hold this with the orange knob here, you can change its velocity, its length, and the note that it's playing. So you can also build chords this way, um, you know, pretty easily by, you know, having this one. Each, each uh, track play a different note on the same step, and then, of course, you've built a chord. So uh, two different ways of doing that, depending on if you want to live play it or use the sequencer for that. So I hope this has given you a taste of kind of the depth and the power of what you can do with this, with wave cycle synthesis. Um, there's, yeah, there's definitely a lot further we can take this. Um, and I would say that in terms of actually using this to write music, um, the way that I would typically do it is I'd probably have like three or four of, tra of these tracks playing my rhythm section, right? So my drums. And that's going to probably be mostly traditional samples, like what this thing is designed for. And then I'll take, you know, somewhere between one and three of the tracks to do wave cycle synthesis and have those be my synth tones. And it works really well for something like, let's say I had four tracks of drums, track five is my bass line, track six is my lead part that I'm live playing on top of it, that kind of thing. Um, that can work really well. And um, you can kind of have all this baked into one thing. And that is very much like the Novation Circuit, right? Four drum tracks, two synth tracks. Now, yes, with the circuit, they're poly tracks. That's better. But so, yeah, um, I think maybe I'll wrap this up here for now. Uh, perhaps there will be some follow up later as I think of more things to do. All right. Cheers.